Howdy all, me again. Um, welcome to part 30. Um, I'm feeling quite recovered now since the whole, you know, coughing episode. I mean, I'm still not 100%, but I'm way better than what I was a couple of days ago, so I feel ready to carry on recording. Anyway, in the last part, we tried to reunite with Mimi, but she was being a stroppy bitch. Because she's got it into her head that she's some sort of special princess and blah 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 blah. So now we have to help out these Gekamon and well not these ones because they they obviously are coming after us. But we want to help out because Mimi's obviously being a bitch. So the plan is basically we need to reawaken Shogun Gekamon, and I'm gonna continue calling him that because I cannot for the life of me remember his Japanese name. Um, we want to use this tape recorder to record Mimi's voice so that we can reawaken Shogun Gekamon, and then she'll have no excuse. She can no longer continue to be a prissy princess. One Gekamon and Otomon asked us to help them, but evidently these two. They have no idea what we're doing, and, and they're on Mimi's side, so we have to battle them. They shouldn't be that tough, actually. Okay. One evolution can't hurt. Okay. I think Agumon should be okay on his own. He shouldn't need to evolve, but I evolved Gunnarman because Gunnarman's not that great as, as a... Jesus Christ! Wait, that should finish off one. Let's get rid of that other one. Take this! God, they're noisy fuckers. I saw it. I want to get this over with. Take this, bitch. Don't mess with Braymon, he is so fucking powerful. Oh my word. Um. Right, so, uh. Now that we've taken care of them, let's go and sort Mimi out because we need to take her out once and for all. Put her, you know, bring her down a peg or two. Let's go. This place is really easy to traverse. There's not a, not an issue at all here. So I don't really want to battle you, Atamamon. Okay. Well, thanks for diverting me towards the item, because I would not have thought to go down there. Anything in here? No. Ah, go away. Stupid frogs. Right, uh, do I save or not? I think there's another dungeon here. There might be something in there. No. There isn't. Okay, so I just wasted my time. There was no harm in looking. I wanted to go up here anyway, not up the, the previous stairs like I initially thought. Oh, look at all the pretty flowers. <laughs> Mimi won't know what hit her. <laughs> Stupid bitch. <laughs> like I said, there is a time and a place for being a pretty little princess. When the world is in danger, that is not the time to be a pretty little princess. <laughs> so they are basically saying, well, why don't you practice singing? Ha <laughs> ha 
Na 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 na. That that's supposed to wake him up, is it? But Mimi's not stupid. Despite her behaviour, she can see what's going on quite clearly. These assholes are going to stop me from enjoying myself. Damn it! Yikes. <laughs> so, she's so angry, she locks them up in her prison cell. What a bitch. Nobody's going to take being a princess away from me. Nobody. Spoiled fucking brat. When I watched this episode, well, the dubbed episode, so I should say, I really wanted to smack her in the face. My word, she was so annoying. And I believe Palmon essentially turns around and says, you're a sport brat. And if I remember rightly, Mimi ends up locking her up as well. Her own partner. What a fucking bitch. What, Pamon was only speaking the truth? You're a spoilt brat. Don't look at me like that, missus. So she goes to sleep at night and has a dream. And in this dream, everyone's sort of like attacking her and nobody will come to her help. Because, uh... Well, she's been so horrible to everyone, no one wants to help her. Anyway, Sora comes along in her dream and says, well, you know what you have to do to set things right. The way you have been behaving is out of order. And Mimi kind of comes to that conclusion on her own. Well, with, with help from Sora. Mimi initially believes it's a dream, but it soon becomes quite clear that it wasn't, and Mimi actually, well, Sora was actually there. Which means she obviously didn't follow Yamato and Takaru, she followed Taichi and Joe. Because she didn't interfere at all with Kushiro, so she had to have gone after Mimi. So we get a rank up between Sora and Mimi, which is good. Could use all the rank ups that I can get. Anyway, we don't really have much other option, we have to talk to our buddies. And they're all like, yeah, we're locked up. What are we going to do? Our friend's a bitch. So, yeah. Just, I don't know what's being said here. Just chat to all your buddies. And as soon as you've done that, Mimi comes along in her normal attire and releases you. And is all very apologetic. She's sorry that she's been a bitch and that she put herself first. I mean, okay, yeah, putting yourself first, not always a bad thing. But in this case, it was a very bad thing. It was it was just pure bratty selfishness. But at least she's realised that now and she's apologising for it. So Tai Chi now ranks up with Mimi and Joe also ranks up with Mimi. Which is good. Again, all the rank ups I can get is great because it means I can get all my megas at the end of the game. I need my megas. Or ultimates. If you're a Japanese person. You know, if you support the Japanese version, I should say. So, it is time. Mimi is now going to awaken Shogun Gekamon. La 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 la. She's not even singing. They could, if if music was going to be the only thing that was going to wake him up, and that her singing wasn't going to have any impact. 
Then why the frick did that, didn't they just play some music? I get it. I know that she was singing, but they just cut out for whatever reason. So he's awake and he's actually not happy that he's been woken up. It's a bit like me. <laughs> How dare you wake me up. I was having such a nice dream about things that, you know, don't concern anybody else. So, yeah, we've got to fight this guy now. You know, we got all this lamp to help waken him up and we have to fight him because he's an ungrateful bastard that just did not want to be woken up. Well, actually saying that, I, like I say, I, I'm kind of like that as well. I feel kind of sorry for him. Poor bastard. He wants to be woken up. I don't. So anyway. Best get you up to Metal Greymon level. That should take him out pretty quickly. Provided he's not too defensive. Okay, he's not too bad. Right, let's get you up to champion. Take this. Well, that's not going to do very much, is it? I reckon it's mostly going to be Palmon and Metal Greymon dishing out a lot of the damage here. Coconut's punch. Bam! Okay, it still didn't do a lot, so it's mostly going to be Metal Greymon dishing out the damage here. Okay, fine. Not fast. Some people might be thinking, okay, but, but in the last episode, Kushiro got, you know, a lot to his, you know. We, we got at the Carbuterimon with Kushiro. Why the hell aren't we getting Mimi's ultimate form? Because she's not ready to have her ultimate form yet. She's still got a lot to learn. We will be getting one more ultimate soon. And I refuse to call them perfect because the Fucking not perfect. There's a level above them. They should be called perfect. I've no idea what that attack does. I think it boosts like defense or something. I'm not sure. Someone want to clarify that for me? But anyway, this guy's not tough. Just keep wearing him down and. Shouldn't have a problem. I actually did not mean to do that. I meant to go after Togemon again, but I kind of screwed up and accidentally hit the button on Metal Greymon. Not that it really matters because we're about to finish this guy. And this guy's obviously taken a uh, Team Chaotix approach, I suppose. Oh, fucking hell. He's taking a Team Chaotix approach and me, and that is awful singing, kill, you know, does damage to enemies. And yes, that was a reference to Sonic Heroes. And yay, Palmon's leveled up. She's still lagging a little bit, but that's not too much of an issue. We can, we can catch up. No problemo. Rightio, so we've defeated Shogun Gekamon. I still, I'm racking my brains trying to think what his Japanese name. I think it's like Tonosama Gekamon or, or something like that. But I can never be a hundred percent sure. I could be right though. It could be Tonosama Gekamon. Okay, so that's that battle done. And before this episode comes to an end, I think it's about time we finally learn who Pico Devimon's working for. Because obviously he's having to report to this guy now that he's failed again. God, I'd be pissed off with him if I was his boss. 
Oh my god, it's the Joker. <laughs> I mean, just, just look at his model and that, that creepy smile. It just looks stupid. Anyway, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Van Dimon. He is the next major villain we need to take on. The kids will get to meet him very, very, very soon. I think that'll probably be in the next part um, for this playthrough. Um, I can't really change this, can I? No, I can't. Despite the fact that we're going to reunite with the other bloody kids, we can't bloody switch the team around. That makes no fucking sense. Oh well, I don't care. <laughs> okay. So, we're now about to reunite with Yamato, um, Takeru and Kushiro. But still not quite ready to reunite with Sora just yet. But it is literally just around the corner. We reunite with her shortly after reuniting with the rest of them. So I think now we're rem kind of reminiscing on the fact that Sora has been kind of impacting things a little bit. Because Mimi recalls hearing her in her dream. And now she's starting to wonder if it was actually, if she wasn't actually really there at all. Because she could have actually been there for real. And of course, spoiler alert, she was really there. But Mimi thought it was a dream. And of course, she obviously told Argumon about the, the um, forgetful mushrooms. But, and unbeknownst to Yamato and Joe, she helped kind of she did kind of help a little bit in trying to stop Pico Devimon making Joe's life hell, but didn't help an enormous amount. I'm switching Padamon in because Padamon really needs leveling up. Um, and Palmon does as well. I'm just going to have a quick look at this just to make 100% sure that there's nothing I can add here. Um, I want to keep that on him because... It's never a bad idea just to boost the experience a bit. Mainly I'm thinking defense with Pat Patamon because Patamon's not very defensive. I'll pop that there. I don't know if we're going to be entering battle with him though because... Well, I'd, I wasn't 100% sure at this point what was coming up next. But uh, yeah, definitely keeping that pink one on him because it'll help him gain experience much quicker. Um, SP, yeah, okay, fine, SP. And there's nothing I can do about speed. I'm not really concerned about speed in any case. Padamon's, Padamon's not too slow. Okay. See, that would be a handy one to put on there. Um, regaining HP by 2000, but I'm not too concerned right about now. So, try heading over here, and you can't go that way, despite the fact that we were near the sea. And I did not want to battle that, get Betamon, but okay, fine, whatever. Toss pot. Well, at least Agamon's leveled up. And then the fight that's probably going to be coming up in the next part, I'm, I'm, it, it's not going to hurt to have Agumon be at, be at a, a, a higher level. So what we actually want to do is head up this way. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if people actually were confused by that because I could say, oh, I went left thinking I had to go left and no, you got to go straight up. So now we're trying to find Sora, because let's face it, she's the only one we've got to reunite with, and it seems like she's trying to hide from us because she has been in contact with us, protecting us in various ways. 
That's a flyman. You might think that you have to battle him. No, you don't. Because Bergeron comes along and beats him for you. So now we know Sora's nearby. We've got to go find her. If Bergeron's here, then Sora's not far behind. And I hate you, Kuagaman. Seriously, I've got things to get on with. Don't need to battle stupid bugs. And I'm not objecting to Garbimon going up another level. Certainly not. Um, okay. So let's hopefully try and avoid these. You can battle Flymon now, but really, I don't want to. I just want to get a move on. I want to find Sora and just get a move on with this whole quest. Okay. It's a bit of healing. Can't hurt. Alright. Continue along and eventually we'll run into Sora. I mean, she can't stay hiding from us forever, can she? Go away, Quagamon! Fucking hell. I really don't like Quagamon. I really don't like Quagamon. Well, at least Padamon's up a level. He's catching up quite quickly. I think that was probably partially down to that experience item that I slapped on him. Arrgh! Flymon, you are a prick, and I do not want to fight you. So. Can I move on now? You know, I've got to find Sora, you know. This isn't, let's battle loads and loads of bugs who've got nothing better to do. I'm not sure which way. Oh, whatever. If there was an item box up there, then I've missed it. It's just tough shit. Anyway, there's Sora. And she runs away! Why is she running away from us? I thought we were friends! Anyway, avoid these bloody bugs. Go round. Go through here. And just like I say, just, just keep following the path along. Eventually we'll have to... We will catch up to her and she won't be able to run anymore. Why has she got to run from us anyway? We're her friends. And evidently she does care because she's been protecting us all this time. Anyway, we get up to this point and I believe we finally catch up to her. How did Toichi get there? <laughs> so now we've got her. She's forced to admit that she has to confess her woes. Because evidently she has got woes. Anyway, she tells them that Pico Devimon, yes, that wanker again, told her that her crest is the crest of love and she's incapable of love. And the reason she believes this is because it stems back to an incident with her own mother um, where her mother told her she wanted to stop playing football and, and you know, work in a flower shop with her and stuff. Anyway, if I recall rightly, when it came to her not wanting her to take part in this football match, a lot of it was down to the fact that she'd injured herself and she was worried about Sora getting hurt even further, but... Sora didn't see that, she just saw her mother only caring about a flower shop or something. So... And at the moment, still, Sora still didn't kind of realise that her mother was just trying to prevent her from getting hurt any further. As a result, she kind of misunderstands love and just kind of... Yeah, she kind of believes that, that lying tosser when he says that she'll never get across the globe because she doesn't understand love. 
and it really has affected her severely because obviously she's been trying to stay away from her friends probably because she's been too ashamed about it or something but anyway with this reunion she's forced to admit you know you know she this this is her concern here but obviously we know Sora's capable of love she's been protecting her friends all this time out of love for them We stop going on about Pico Devilman, the, the guys are lying tosser, all these kids. Bar, well, bar from maybe Kushiro, because he, Pico Devilman generally stayed out of Kushiro's line of sight. All these kids can attest to the fact that he is a fucking liar. That has his own agenda. Well, was following the own agenda of his own boss, but, you know. But I believe this was the episode where they learn what their crests actually mean. Like Taichi's his courage, Yamato's his friendship, Takeru's his hope, Mimi's his sincerity. I think it's different in Japanese. Purity or something like that. What was that Hikari's? Oh shit, I just spoiled it. Oh well. Joe's his reliability. And Sora's his love. Oh, and Kushiro's his knowledge. Yeah. If I remember rightly, in the, in the English dub, this was the episode where they learned the meaning of their crest. I'm assuming it's the same for the Japanese version. Anyway, Takeru's like. Takeru's like, well, Sora's been like a mother to me for, on this journey, and. Thanks to her, I've been able to keep my chin up and not miss my own mother so much. And pretty much begs her not to go. That's based on the English dub, so it could be different in the Japanese version. So Sora's now reunited with us and we don't have to worry anymore. Anyway, I'll see you guys. Actually, no, fuck that. We have a quick chat here. Option 2 ranks us up with Sora. And it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this part off here. Because next time we're going to be facing off against Vamdemon. And oh my word. He's the next big boss for a reason. So we kind of got to... We kind of got to be prepared for him, you know. See you then.